What influencers don't tell you after you've quit your job to travel the world? I am sure you've seen the sponsored posts floating around your social media feed of travelers, in these candid well-desired places with the caption, I quit my 9 to 5 to travel the world and so can you. You immediately get excited, then you look at the stack of bills on your dining room table, then your bank account, and then instantly become discouraged and continue scrolling through your feed. Yeah, that was me two years ago too. But now here I am, I did quit my federal 9 to 5 job to travel the world full time, and I'm here to give you the scoop that most influencers don't tell you about moving abroad. Don't believe all the hype, it was planned. Most of us did not just walk into work one day, went to our managers, and told them that we quit. This is not a movie, this real life and we are real people, we have bills, having a plan is key. Some planned months in advance and some even years. Personally I had it as a thought starting in 2016, started looking at ways to make the move in 2018 after two years of contemplation, and self-doubt finally in 2019 I started the process of making the move happen, that is four years. Please do not go into your job quitting and thinking your bills will disappear, make a plan. Jobs do not just fall in your lap, you have to do the work. Unless you're taking a gap year and living off your savings. You have to think about it, there are thousands of other people just like you, who had the same mindset of quitting their normal work and hopefully landing a remote job, or temporary one that allows room for flexibility. Before actually quitting your job back at home, Try to invest in getting a credential that would help you work remotely, if you don't already have that credential. Checkingremote.com is a great resource, as well as ajarn.com if you are looking into teaching in Thailand. If you want respect from the locals, learn the language. If you are coming from an English-speaking country moving abroad, to somewhere where the native language is not English, do your best to learn the language. At least the essentials to help navigate through your day. Most countries outside of the U.S. begin teaching English to children starting at the age of 5 years old, so while meeting a local, they already know some English, but more than likely they'll be more inclined to help you, if you can speak some of their language. It shows that you are actually trying to learn their culture and contribute to their economy, and not just not there for selfish reasons. Expect things to not go as planned. Actually have no expectations. It will make the process go more smoothly. Of course have a plan as I mentioned above, but mentally prepare yourself to be okay if things do not go according to that plan. Life just happens daily and a lot of it is out of our control. Get yourself into the habit of turning the lemons into lemonade. Currently I should be on my fourth country of my Southeast Asia tour, however a global pandemic altered my plans. Instead I took that as time to work and build my brand, and do things I couldn't do before because I didn't have time. There you have it. Lemons into lemonade. People back at home tend to forget about you. This one is a hard pill to swallow. Those close friends you use to party with and talk to daily, become distant strangers who you only hear from on holidays, or if something happened in your country, so they reach out to you to check on you. Try your best not to take it to heart, being that you are no longer as accessible to them that you once were, you sort of fell off their radar. An out of sight, out of mind mentality. Don't flip out on them though, just roll with the punches and learn to deal with those who cannot handle the distance. Hostels will become your best friend. It's not always luxurious hotels and dope villas, regardless of what you see in the pictures, sometimes it's Airbnbs and hostels. But be real, you're traveling the world, do you really need 4 and 5 star hotels to store your luggage? That's essentially what you are doing, paying for luggage storage. If you are anything like me, I like to go off an adventure, and the only time I am in my accommodation is to rest and shower. Actually hostels are a complete gem. I was against them at first because I could not get over the concept of sharing my space with someone, but honestly if you plan to country hop, you will not even be at home as much as you think. Hostels are also great for solo travelers, you can meet other travelers from around the world organically, who you can go on group tours with. Are you ready to head abroad? All in the same breath, do not let these things listed above discourage you. Moving abroad is still such a rewarding and empowering decision to make. From the self-growth you'll obtain to the new friends you meet and the places you go, it all is worth it. If you are considering moving abroad, do it. It wasn't just a thought for no reason. 
Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking that button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.